the toss. They will be receiving to your left. You're looking at Mike Nell, one of the dangerous return men in the league. And set to kick off for the Green Bay Packers will be Eddie Garcia. He handles the kickoff duties for Green Bay. Jan Stenrud, of course, the record-setting field goal kicker, will handle the field goal duties. We're underway from Green Bay. The pack against the Redskins. And rather an anticlimactic opening after such a buildup. Flags are down, the ball hooked out of bounds, and we would suspect that we will now see the Green Bay Packers back up five yards and do it all over once again. So Eddie Garcia kicking off for Jan Stenerud, hooks it out left, and this should provide Mike Nelms an excellent opportunity for a return. Green Bay tough against the kickoff return. Their opposition in the first six games have only averaged a little over 16 yards a return. But Mike Nelms is third in the NFL, running it back a little over 24 yards a pop. The Redskins, again, five and one. They're trying to stay within one of the Dallas Cowboys in the NFC East. Green Bay is three and three into the night, and they are really unpredictable. They opened with a win over Houston. They lost to Pittsburgh. They beat the Rams. They lost to the Giants. They beat Tampa Bay. And they lost to Detroit last week. They've won big and they've lost big. Every other week. They get into the swing. And this, this week they plan to win. It's it supposed to be an on week for them. This is it. All right. Set to go once again. Eddie Garcia. They'll kick from the 30. Nelms has moved up to about the three yard line. And Eddie Garcia trying to get distance on it. Oh, come Hooks on it out. Eddie. It's going to be five more yards. <laughs> That's not and what you want to do. And I hope this is not an omen of things to come. <laughs> well, I think we're going to see Stinner Rude with another one. Third strike and you're out. Or Bart Starr. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, we came up here in 1979. And Bart Starr, Mr. Consistency, Mr. Clean, Mr. Everything. And he coaches a little bit that way. We came up here in 1979. New England was heavily favored. And Bart Starr came out. He came out in a 3-4. He blitzed almost in every play. He ran reverses. He went on fourth down about three times, and it was a stunning upset over New England. I'm not saying that we're going to see that tonight, but Bart Starr, with the defense he has, knows he's going to have to do something a little extra special tonight. Otherwise, Washington's going to have the football all night long, and we're going to have a short game. And they're going to have it in a pretty good field position right here. All right. Eddie Garcia this time wises up, picks it high, and Nels will take it from his own 13-yard line. And good coverage. Well, that Green is Bay good. special team on the third kickoff attempt. They will have the Redskins inside the 30. And Joe Thyssen comes on, having a tremendous year. Perhaps the most impressive part of that, those three interceptions, but he has not had an interception in 93 of his last attempts. That spans 14 quarters. The Redskins don't turn it over. John Riggins, who handles the ball most of the time, does not fumble. And they beat you with the turnover, your turnovers, and just absolute bullying you offensively. First and 10, the Redskins near their 30-yard line. Riggins left side behind Jacoby. A flag is down as Ezra Johnson strung it out for Green Bay. For a loss of about a yard, but again, a flag is down. Our referee tonight is Ben Greif. And the motion illegally against the Redskins. And it will give us an opportunity to look at a defense that is really been hurting by injuries throughout Illegal this young motion. season. Number 87 there they are. Offense. Byron Braggs at left defensive end has replaced the departed down. Mike Butler. A nose tackle, a lot of trouble there. They're down to their third one. Good linebackers. They're very good. They're excellent. And they have to be because they get a lot of action. That's the secondary. And it's interesting that we have a pair of Mark Murphys of free safety tonight. They, of course, are no relation. Oh, my goodness. 28-yard line. Penalty decline. There was a loss of a little over a yard by Riggins, and Riggins will try it again. Bowling up the middle and swarming defense again by Green Bay. It'll bring up a third down and long for Joe Theismann, and we will see the third wide receiver. That will be Alvin Garrett, Joni Art Monk, and also Charlie Brown. Taking a look at number 52, George Cumbie in the middle, playing the run almost as well. He didn't quite get all the way there, but he played the run very well. The interior of that line. One interesting thing about the Redskins: all good teams do it. They go to their strength. They ran that ball to their left, which is what they like to do. Even though that's the strong side of the Green Bay Packers defense. Third down and nine. Tyson is back, trying to get the screen off, and that uh -huh. screen intended for Joe Washington. I, that could have been a lateral. Might be. That might be, yeah. Or a fumble. What? 
Yeah, and that's Mike, Mike Douglas. Douglas, the Mad Dog, and he likes to be called that. As and I said, two of those three plays went to the Green Bay right side, the left side of the Washington Redskins offense, and that's the strong side for the Green Bay Packers. They have Mike Douglas and the Erza Johnson on that side, and they're their two best defensive players. Let's take a look at from the end zone. Theisman trying to get the screen off, and Mike Douglas read the play all the way. He was right in the middle of it. There it is. They're calling that a completion and then a fumble. That's that. right. You that cannot advance the lateral. So that is a completion, a fumble, and a Green Bay touchdown. So he picked it up like a loaf of bread. That huh? dog was out there, wasn't he? <laughs> Talking about pawning a basketball, palming one. <laughs> Jan Stenerud for the conversion. And this backer crowd, all 56,000 of them, love those three offensive plays of the Redskins. Center to the uprights in Green Bay without an offensive possession leads the Washington Redskins seven to nothing. Let's take a look at it once again. And Mike Douglas is one fine football player, a pro bowler from a year ago. He reads plays well. He was just sitting right out there. Ezra Johnson almost got his hand in the number 90. Good defensive coverage by Green Bay. I'll tell you, that's hard to do. Take the man down, strip the ball, that's pick right. it up, get into the end zone, <laughs> and the pack is out on top early here at Lambeau Field, Green Bay, Wisconsin. And there he is, Mike Douglas. He's given the pack a 7-0 lead. The man who brought five championships, including two Super Bowl victories, the first two to Green Bay, Wisconsin, and quite a man. I played for him five years. Bart Starr, of course, as a 17th round draft pick, developed into a Hall of Famer. And believe me, it is difficult to follow in the footsteps of a legend like Lim, uh, Vince Lombardi. Nelms is back again. Eddie Garcia set to kick off for the Packers who are out in front, seven to nothing. Nelms from the five yard line. And this time, Nelms picks up an opening and breaks it off out of the 40 yard line, still on his feet, and sprawls out to the 45 yard line. And the Redskins roar right back. Well, you can see why those first two kickoffs were kicked out of bounds. They were trying to keep the ball away from Nums, who's a, uh, Nelms, who's a, a pro bowler the last couple of years. And I guess they figure instead of giving up the penalty, they're going to kick it to him. And they may have to go back to trying to keep the ball away from him if, in the future. Real good field position. Theisman, of course, steps into the huddle. Their single back offense. They use a lot of moving with their dual tight end situation. Rick Walker, usually the move man. Art Monk, however, Wide receiver, he'll move also. Riggins left side and moving behind Jacoby. And this time it was George Cumbie who stepped inside, picked up Riggins and held him to a yard pickup. You never know how long they're going to be able to maintain this enthusiasm, but I would say Bart certainly got him. He's got him juiced up, hasn't he? Juice, is yeah, he well, he's got him going. But you know, it's funny though, as we were saying earlier, a good team, as you can see, Crumbie and Douglas get in on the play. A good team will not change what they do. Uh, to take advantage of the other team. Sometimes they will, but the strength of the, of the Green Bay team is the right side of their defense. It was a gain of a yard. It's second down and nine. That's Monk in motion. We'll see a lot of that tonight. Theismann and right Monk is the there, money. splitting his own defense. Monk came from the far side. We mentioned he, the Redskins like to use him in motion. They got him over there into his own situation, and he split the defense, and Theismann who is throwing this year at 60% is right on target. Straight up, I think he pretty well caught it, Frank. He just, he had some time to throw and he split that zone. The ball is really well thrown. That's a pretty long throw, dropped right in the middle. Got in there behind Mike McCoy and in front of Mark Murphy. That's an open spot, though. That's really not a defensive coverage for either one of those guys. That was just a well-executed offensive play. Redskins first down near the 20-yard line of the pack. Early going here in the first quarter from Green Bay. Riggins on a delay. Moves back to the right. Runs into Packers. Breaks it off in the middle and gets sheer weight. Drills for about three. It'll be second down and seven. Tried to pull that big left side of the line. Looked like to get out in front of Riggins, but uh, couldn't make much headway. Riggins into tonight. 562 yards. 3-7 average. Eight touchdowns. Is now the NFL's fifth all-time rusher, moving in behind Jimmy Brown and of course Franco Harris and the man on my right, O.J. Simpson and Walter Payton. All right, second down and seven. The ball close to the 17-yard line. 
That's Charlie Brown in motion. And quickly, the flanker screen to Brown. That's a good play. And Brown moving behind. Art Monk gets down inside the five-yard line where it'll be first down goal to go. The Redskins do so many things. And the one thing you always notice, Don and O.J., is they do the safe things. They do. They really do. And I think, you know, one of the things, they're, they're no kind for the running, the, the big hogs up front and Riggins, of course. But when they throw, they, it really does work. They're very effective with that. Now, those little safe patterns out there, give it to those guys. Let them make some moves. Well, they have the kind, kind of receivers that can make the move after they catch the ball. A delirium short-lived by the Packer fans as the Redskins are knocking. First down, goal to go. Riggins in the arms of Cumby. Surge down close to the two-yard line. Cumby, he, he's all over everywhere today. Well, he's a tough one in there. He's 6'1", 224-pounder. First round pick in 1980, and both inside linebackers, Rich Wingo and Cumby, play the run well, while Anderson and Douglas play the run well, but also are exceptional pass defenders. A good linebacking for him. Mike McCoy saw come in from the right cornerback was also in on that tackle. They marked it at the three-yard line. Second down, goal to go. Joe Gibbs, the young coach of the Redskins, looking on. Wansley is in motion. Riggins. Fumble the football. The ball is loose at the goal line. The pack is saying we've got it. Of course. They're going to say Riggins, it. who just does not fumble the ball, has just coughed it up. You were talking about the lack of fumbles and interceptions beginning, but with that takeaway, giveaway thing, Frank, they lead the league. The Redskins are plus 17. That's the tops in the league, while Green Bay is minus six. Really does have an awful yeah. lot to do with it. Well, John, what he did, he saw the goal line, and he, I think he was just about to take the ball to try to stick it out there over the goal line. Redskins, if they've got it back in the end zone, we're going to have a Redskin touchdown. Well, the Packers have indicated touchdown. But the officials have not. What did the well, they guess they, they don't have to guy. bother. It was fumbled and recovered in the end zone, and the Redskins are on the scoreboard. Who covered it? I couldn't. I, I think it was Clint Didier, the tight end. There were a bunch of folks down there grubbing around for it. Well, that was rather anticlimactic. I couldn't even see. Okay, Bobby. Heisman will hold and Mark Mosley. Two fine place kickers here tonight. High snap. Heisman quickly gets it down. And the Redskins, in short order, have tied this football game up. <laughs> it didn't take them long, did it? Good return by Mike Nelms. Heisman with a good shot to Art Monk. And then a flanker screen to Charlie Brown. And then Riggins on this play. Second down, goal to go. Tries to go over the top. Coughs it up. Right there, he's carrying it, he's protecting it well. Hit by Wingo, who pulls it out. Wingo. And Mike McCoy looks like he'll have a shot at it. That ball's lying right there. That looks like a Green Bay guy. Well, we'll get the official word on who has scored the Washington touchdown very shortly when we return to Green Bay, Wisconsin on our beautiful night for football. Clint Didier. The backup tied in for the Washington Redskins fell on John Riggins' fumble, and we have a tied game with 10:35 remaining in the first quarter. Jeff Hayes handles the kickoff chores for the Redskins, replacing Mark Mosley, the field goal kicker. Eddie Lee Ivory is deep for Green Bay, and this is a short kick taken there by Harlan Huckleby, and Huckleby runs into his own man as he goes down close to the 30-yard line. So offensively, we'll look at the Green Bay Packers for the first time this evening as Lynn Dickey trots onto the field. And this man, has, well, he's a physiological marvel to begin with, but he's out there with all the things that have happened to him over his 13-year career is a miracle, but he has had a fairly good season thus far, got off to a tremendous start, eight touchdown passes in his first two games, passing at just under 66% for the season. Jerry Ellis, single setback, play action. And right away, going deep for Lofton, and Lofton is there, oh. but he doesn't hold on. That was close. Curtis that Jordan ball. back defending in the zone, and I'll tell you, Dickey had it right on the money. That ball should have been caught. He'd split him. Splitting Vernon Dean and Mark Murphy. You and can believe that Lofton is talking to himself now, but I got a feeling he'll have an opportunity to make amends. He might, he might. He dropped one last week. We they, couldn't, they couldn't believe that either. He's been zipping along here, catching everything close to him. He's got five touchdowns on the year. 
at three earlier in the season in a losing effort against Pittsburgh. Had a big win against the Rams of over 70 yards. Lofton, former track star, great long jumper and spinner at Stanford. Second down and 10. Dickey is back looking. Caught on the tight end. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right on target. Oh. The first down is at the 47 yard line. Oh, I'll tell you, Curtis Jordan had him as well covered as you can cover, ask him to. Coffin ran a fairly good route, but the real key is this throw. That thing is right on the money. Look at that. Man, that's a tight spiral out there. Ooh, boy. I wish I could throw one like that. <laughs> yeah, I tell you. you. can't do it any better, guys. Oh, oh. Well, you know, the, the Redskins have, I mean, the, the Packers have three all pro receivers, and you can expect to see the ball in the air all night by them. Not basically an all pro line, however. And as you've already touched on, Dickey is not a very agile quarterback. John uh -huh. Jefferson, he has another Green Bay first down at Washington's 40 yard line. They're not going to leave any doubt what they had in mind right. doing coming in. They're going after that 26th ranked pass defense in the league. Forget that number one against the rush. I'll tell you what Jefferson and Lofton both can do. They can get 10, 12, 14 yards deep so quickly that Dickey doesn't have to hold that ball before he delivers it. And the defensive backs have got to give them some room. They've got that breakaway sprinter speed, so you've got to give them some room. First and 10, near the Redskins 40 yard line. The game tied at seven. Under 10 minutes now remaining in the first quarter. Swanley Lee Ivory, right side. It's a yard, <laughs> maybe. It'll be second down and long. Well, every so often you got to run the ball, you know, to make <laughs> them think about it a little bit. Just a tad. Well, Eddie Lee Ivory and uh, Gary Ellis, the two backs back there, pretty good receivers, too. In fact, Gary Ellis, I think, has the record for the all time. Receptions by a back here in Green Bay, so he's gonna he got all those guys. Oh, up yeah. yeah. And Paul Kaufman, they're tied in. You double the team, Jefferson and Lofton. You better watch Kaufman. Second down nine, we'll call it. Inside handoff. This is Eddie Lee Ivory, and Eddie Lee Ivory picks up yardage to the 45-yard line. It will still leave Dickey in a passing situation with third and a long four. Well, Eddie Lee Ivory has really been something. OJ, he came back the number one draft pick, what was it, 79, tore his knee up the first game, came back, had a big year in 80. Very first game against the Bears the following year, tore up the other knee. And then last year he came back to have another good season. He can do a lot of things out of that back. He had an excellent year last year. He scored nine touchdowns rushing. Third down, long four. There he is. Fire is on the sixth complete to Kaufman, the tight end. And their scans were doubling, trying to help Gerald Green on one corner, Bernadine on the other, getting single coverage against Kaufman, first down Green Bay. Kaufman's 22nd or 23rd reception now this season. The first down is inside the 27-yard line. Well, I guess it's not, uh, you can't panic this time of the game, Don, but what would you do? I mean, they got to start blitzing him or something. Well, I'd keep throwing. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to throw. Kaufman in motion, sets up for protection. Wide oh, open. Out of the flat was Mike Mead incomplete. Could have picked up. Wasn't very well timed that time. Looked like Dickie got in a little bit of a hurry. Well, I said they had to start blitzing. They had uh, Mel Kaufman coming in on the blitz, and when you're throwing the ball this well, uh, the, the only thing the defense can do is try not to give the quarterback the time. And I think from this point on, we're going to see the Redskins doing an assortment of blitz, blitzing, and that's something that they don't normally do. Not a lot of, anyway. Yeah. Makeshift line for the Green Bay Packers. They move their right tackle. That's Greg Cook. He's starting a right guard against Big Dave Butts. They're threatening safety blitz, the Redskins. They step out of it. Dickey to Kaufman in the end zone and good coverage by the Redskins. They showed blitz, got out of it, and now it will put the Packers into a third down and 10. Good time to throw. He didn't get that pressure that time. He was trying to go to Lofton, looked like to me, and they had Lofton pretty well covered deep. Came back late trying to go to Kaufman. It's kind of a, you know, this is kind of a situation where you're, you're that second down, they're trying to score a touchdown. They've been got those 10, 12 yard patterns. That's what they're looking for right now. So. We didn't go for that. We went for the big one. Dickey looks it over. The Redskins showing their 4-3. 
cornerbacks right up in the face of the two wide receivers, Lofton and Jefferson. Good protection. Well, Jefferson. Oh. Almost a spectacular catch, but he does not hold on. And we have seen him over his six years, three of them in San Diego, make great catches just like that. Yeah, you can't blame him at that point because he was lucky to get his hands on the ball. In any event, it looks like a flag is down in the backfield. Normally, that indicates holding, so it would have went for naught anyway. And it will be an interesting decision on the part of the Redskins. Great field goal kicker for the Packers is John Stenerud. They I found could it. decline the penalty and bring up a fourth down, or they could take the penalty and move Stenerud well back, and it would be third down and 20. And they'll take the penalty, backing up the back. Holding offense, number 67. That is Swanke over at left tackle. He is working against Dexter Manley. No wonder he holds. Can't say that. I blame him. The ball was just a little bit high, but we have seen him make catches like that. You don't realize how high he's jumped off the ground. He made it look like it was just barely overthrown. Third down and 20. And then Dickey will be thinking at least get it into field goal range. They are just out of the range of Jan Stenerou. So he throws underneath. He goes to Lofton. Lofton uh, looked for additional yardage. He'll get it just inside the 30-yard line, and we will see Jan Stenerou. And this will be just about Stenerou's distance. He's 7 of 8 this year with the long of 46. And, of course, became the NFL's second all-time leading scorer earlier this year, passing Jim Turner. A great veteran of so many years of Kansas City play. I recall my rookie year, we played Kansas City twice. He had 10 field goals in the two games. <laughs> he will blister you. A 47-yard attempt. Bucky Scribner, the holder. He's got the distance. Oh, he does. And he's got it through the uprights. And the Packers have taken the lead. 10 to 7. We have 6.34 in the first quarter. High-spirited football game. We hope you're enjoying. John Stenerud, he's now 8 of 9 on the year, hitting a 47-yarder. That's his longest of the season. There's Mike Nelms, again, providing that dangerous return of kicks to Washington. This one dribbled along the ground, taken by the big bulky lineman out over the 35-yard line. What a weapon Nelms is, though, to affect, a, you know, that big part of the game on kickoffs. They won't even kick to him, so <laughs> that's really wild. That was Cronin, the linebacker on the short kick and Eddie Garcia now has kicked two of them out of bounds to get this game underway. He kicked the short one and the Redskins have good field position at the 35 yard line. The Redskins back with single back offense. Play action by Thysman. Oh. This one was almost picked off by Mike Douglas. Boy, he tended it. for Charlie Brown, incomplete. Oh, I think they're going to learn a lesson in a minute and start coming on this side of the field. <laughs> You've been calling the right side. All yeah, right, I right. think they're going to come over here a little bit. That was a great drop by Douglas that time from his linebacker position. It's a good angle out there. You can be off one step, and you have no, no shot at being able to knock that little pass down, but he was right in the line of flight. little trivia on Douglas. He's only 6 foot 215 pounds, but he high jumped 6 8 at San Diego State was a 50-foot triple jumper. Yeah, I like I like trivia like that. That's Good great. athlete. Yeah. Mike Douglas for Green Bay. Blitz is on. Second down and 10. Theismann, good effort by Art Monk. He was deep and he came back knowing Theismann was in trouble, gave Theismann a target, and Monk gets the first down in Packer territory. <laughs> Let's take a look at it. An unusual way. We'll watch Theismann. We'll watch the two wide receivers, Monk on the right, and up at the left, the other wide receiver for the Redskins, Charlie Brown. And you'll see Theismann do something that is a, effective against a, 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 a blitz. He rolls out to his other side. His line comes across to him. He rolls out to the right. He looks around, and his receiver, Art Monk, been an experienced receiver, came back to the ball and made a very successful play out of it. First down, Green Bay's 43-yard line. Charlie Brown, the motion man now for the Redskins. Riggins countering to the left. Riggins uh -huh. steps to the right, and by the time he gets that big body moving left, the pack had penetrated over on the right side. Wingo in there as the key stopper for Green Bay, number 50. 
Anytime you have to run like that, O.J., before you start asking yourself, who are those guys? Yeah. <laughs> well, like most backs, the more they get the ball, the more they figure out what the defense is doing. And uh, right now, he probably can't figure it out. They own him so tough. <laughs> they own him, boy. Yeah. But I'm sure he wants the ball still. Second down and ten. Riggin, seven carries, eight yards. Walker in motion. Riggins. This time he finds an opening and bowls his way inside the 35-yard line. He'll be short of the first down by about a half a yard. And the Redskins will trot out the short yardage offense. Let's take a look at the end zone replay. He really didn't think he had room out there. He did a little hesitation, and by doing the hesitation, he held the defensive men, gave his offensive lineman a chance to get position, and uh, good back that he is, he found the hole and ran good and tough. How'd you like to be a little Johnny Gray, the secondary? He's a 5'11", a 200-pounder, but when Riggins gets it going north and south, he's got a lot of body behind it. Third down and one. Who else? Riggins. He, I possibly will have the first down. He was hit and hit hard, but he had moved through a hole provided by Joe Jacoby, or actually just a blow off the line by Joe Jacoby. And his first down, Washington. This is what the Packers are going to try and avoid. Washington just grinding it out, throwing the ball in short, and letting Riggins do the heavy work. They can keep the ball all day on a team that can't stop Riggins. And the minute you start bringing your safeties up to help stop that run, they'll burn you with those receivers. First down and 10. Near Green Bay's 38-yard line, the Packers lead 10 to 7. Riggins has strung out again. Good play oh, by yeah. Johnny Gray. And then he got help from inside Rich Wingo and Mike Douglas. Strung out beautifully. And now it'll be second down and 14. And a reminder, college football, it's a beauty coming up on Saturday, 12.30 Eastern time. Michigan getting it on with Iowa. Terrific Big Ten matchup. Michigan 4-0 in the conference and tied with Illinois. Iowa's 3-1, and, and they were beat by Illinois, by the way. A big game in the race for the Big Ten championship. You'll see it right here on ABC this Saturday. We've got a second down at 14. Oh, what a formation that is. Guys from back. Has the time. Oh, and yeah. That was Gia Quinto out of the backfield. You saw him in motion. The former Dolphin picked up in 1981. He worked so well out of the backfield. Good receiver, good hands, and he has an instinct for a receiver. Let's look at him again from the ground level. Let me tell you, I played this game a long time, and I can't tell you what formation they were in. They literally lined up four receivers on the right side, and Chiaquinto was in motion, and he just ran straight down the sideline and beat the coverage. And Really makes a nice over-the-shoulder catch here. That ball was right in there, too. Mark Murphy, 37, you see. Jeff Franco just outran him. Tribute to Joe Gibbs, the fine young coach. He'll move people around until he gets the right person on the right defender. Riggins, right side. First down, goal to go. Inside the five, close to the four. That'll be second and goal. Wingo again, defensively. mentioned that Riggins seldom ever fumbles the ball. In the last three years, coming into the night, Riggins had handled the ball 682 times with only five fumbles. Now that's one fumble every 136 times he carries the football. And, O.J., you know that, that's something. It's amazing when you consider he's the oldest running back in football today, in pro ball today, and he's carrying the ball 25 times a game and not fumbling the ball. It's, it's really amazing. Second down, goal to go. The ball at the four-yard line. Theisman, good play action to Riggins. The Theisman in trouble, and he'll be sacked. Outside the 15 again, Mike Douglas. And getting help from John Anderson. Mike Douglas everywhere tonight. I tell you, Mike Douglas normally is everywhere. And if he was playing in New York, L.A., he may get the recognition he deserves, but he's been playing this type of football year in and year out. He beats his blocker on the blitz, forces Theisman around. It's a credit to Theisman. He was able to beat the tackle, but... He had help from John Anderson to finish him off. 13-yard loss. The ball back at the 15-yard line. 
I think I would have given it to Riggins again because when he fumbles, he fumbles for touchdown. <laughs> you yeah. see it's uh, New England in 78. He, he played for Baltimore, Baltimore. then. He, yeah. he had 260 yards of offense, ran back a kickoff, in a scored rain. a touchdown, and threw another touchdown. It was back. unbelievable. And yeah. it was raining cats and dogs. Third, you saw how much, less than a yard to go. Watch number 44. They usually come left, and they do. Big opening for Reagans. Super Bowl revisited. And Riggins explodes behind big Joe Jacoby, getting all the way down inside the 25-yard line. And so often you see that on third and short because when you get through that line, there are no linebackers, and you have got a sprint on. Well, you said it right. It was Super Bowl revisited. It was the same situation, short yardage, and they ran a real nice play to their left side, a real nice block by Rick Walker. And Riggins amazes me at 34 years of age. He's probably still running under 10 flat. As a high school athlete, he ran 9-8 at Kansas, and he doesn't look like he's slowed up. Uh, he said he was going to come back in the best shape of his life this year. If the Redskins didn't make it to the Super Bowl, they wouldn't say it was because of Riggins, and he is in tremendous shape and having a great year. They've got it marked at the 23-yard line. First and 10, Washington. Riggins again, again left side, and Riggins... Just bowling ahead down close to the 17-yard line for a gain of about five before Byron Braggs is there defensively for Green Bay. Reagans, of course, came to Washington in 76 after five years at the Jets after a couple of thousand-yard seasons up there. He was quite a character up there. He seemed to mellow since he's been with the Redskins. Now they asked him one time if he was different. He said, well, I don't know whether I'm ahead or behind, but I know I'm not in step. Riggins left side fake, and Dyson rolls out wide open. He finds the receiver down inside the five-yard line. Big tight end. The big tight end. I mean, you have to admire Washington. They, they can do so many things. They fake the counter play. They send Theismann out, outside there all by himself. Really, he didn't have a blocker come out with him. He finds a tight end. They, they can beat you so many ways. They move the pocket around. They throw deep. They throw short, and they can muscle you. You got a big play like Riggins broke in that third and one, and Green Bay starts thinking, well, I got to come up here and help out the line, the secondary, I mean. And then you can see Joey Theismann come back with play action. And they get the ball to Don Warren for a first down goal to go. Riggins, left side. And he just surged into the end zone. Redskins are indicating touchdown, but they're going to mark it short. Talk about the play action pass. You couldn't ask for a better runner to run that play action pass all five after you faked it to Riggins because they're going to they expect him to carry it every time anyway. I'd give it to him again, don't you think, right there? I got a feeling they're going to. I don't know. Fasman might be working on statistics. <laughs> Packers on top, 17 to 10. We're in the second quarter with a little more than 11 minutes remaining in the first half. And the Redskins threatening to tie it up. Riggins. Wansley oh, leads yeah. Riggins into the end zone. Touchdown, Washington. I think Riggins will wait till they get a nice lead before he starts working those statistics. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And he just seems to get stronger, even at 34, as the game grows on. Talking to, to Jerry Rome before the game, he says it's amazing. They really do. Riggins kind of comes in. He says he's really a different kind of cat. Says you yeah. never met anybody like him. But he'll come in and before the game, he says, "Yeah, give it to me 30 times." So they give it to him 30 times. I said, "What would you do if they if he said give it to me three times?" He said, "I guess we just give it to him three times. He does what he wants to." Mosley puts the tying conversion point on the scoreboard, and we've got a 17-17 lock here in Green Bay, Wisconsin, between the Packers and the Red. The name alone conjures football excellence. As a man, as a coach, his eyes saw things others didn't. He molded his teams into champions, and they did things others couldn't. They played hard. They played hurt. They found the light inside themselves, and that was the ultimate Lombardi gift. Octavio Pedroza in his second. That's Don Riggins on the sidelines who has just tied this football game up from in short. This kind of football game will put punters out of work. <laughs> we have not had a punt yet. 
They've scored on every possession. Harlan Huckleby deep for Green Bay. Jeff Hayes to kick off. And this will be Huckleby from the two-yard line. And Huckleby out close to the 23-yard line. Let's pause five seconds and allow our station all along the line identify themselves. And this is Channel 7, KBC-TV, Los Angeles. Thank you for the love with O.J. Simpson and Don Meredith. Howard getting a little breather after the World Series coverage. And a game that opened in rather startling fashion. Green Bay getting on the scoreboard. Mike Dutton is taking a fumble in. Didier came back and recovered a Riggins fumble for Washington. That tied it at seven. The outstanding route hit a field goal to make it 10-7 Green Bay. It was tied at 10 when Mosley answered that field goal. Lynn Dickey hit Kaufman. 17-10. Riggins on a touchdown. And this uh -huh. is Gary Ellis or James Lofton. A lot of action here tonight. I'll tell you, we're really looking forward to one on Sunday when Dallas, who finally did not have to struggle yesterday against Philadelphia, takes on the Raiders down at Texas Stadium. The Raiders, of course, surprised, I'm sure, somewhat by Seattle, which is surprising everyone this year. And then, of course, a week from tonight, we'll be in St. Louis for the Giants and the Cardinals. I tell you, on that last play, Mel Kaufman saved the touchdown. He made a heck of a play, didn't he? Second down and four. Mike Mead. Big opening left side, and Mead will have the first down out close to the 40-yard line. Now, that helps their business a lot. They've had a minus rushing yardage in the first quarter. Just run it every now and then. Just so they, as you say, you know they can't. I think the main reason they're running is to try to give their receivers some rest. <laughs> <laughs> He's a very talented lady. That's the wife of James Lofton, Beverly Lofton. James and Beverly have a, their own syndicated TV show. She has been an actress, a model, and she's also a lot of fun. Yeah, you say talented. She's gorgeous also. 39-yard line, first down, 10 Green Bay. Lofton in motion. Sets up the help block. Wide open is Jerry Ellis. Ellis down the sideline, looks at the first down marker, gets the first down in Washington Territory at the 49, and there's a little hassle going on back at the 30-yard line. Dexter Manley is right in the middle of it, so evidently they didn't like what happened back there. Dexter's saying they're holding it, of course. He is talking to Carl Swanke, the left offensive tackle for Green Bay, whose principal role tonight is keeping Dexter Manley off the back of Lynn Dickey. Well, um, He's done a good job. We yeah. haven't heard from him until right then. I don't think they're accustomed to having a team go up and down the field on them like this, even though the Raiders did score 35 points, I guess, a few weeks ago. But defense have a lot of pride. They don't like to be moved on like this. Green Bay in Washington territory once again. Meade in motion, and here comes Eddie Lee Ivory. Uh -huh. He's met quickly. Big day, but pulling out from his defensive tackle was there first. 6'7", 295 pounds, Dave Butts. And he's having a great year. Good move by Oklowitz that time, coming up to the middle linebacker position. Made a good move to at least slow him down. Well, it looked like it was going to be a pretty good play until Oklowitz came through there and forced him upfield. Found a little crack in the line and just shot through. Hate those middle linebackers. Of course. You. Get to know them well. The Redskins fans, Monty Coleman was activated tonight. Good pass defending linebacker has been out for the first six games. Dickey back, second down and 10. Kaufman is wide open once again, and Kaufman will have a first down. He's at the 30-yard line. They are putting that ball right on the money. That's the passing team that lived up to the pregame billing for Green Bay. Well, Dexter, uh, I don't know what argument he had to play before, but Dexter is laying on the field right now. Mr. Manley looks like he's uh, injured. Here's a replay of it. We'll see. The surprising thing right now is that Dickey is getting this much time to pass. He is, and he's putting it right on the money. Good. That Kaufman is going to be, a, I think, a big cog in the game plan tonight because they are still trying to double them on the outside. Believe me. More seriously, Dexter Manley is down at the 42-yard line, the line of scrimmage. He's being treated there. And we'll be returning to Green Bay in just a few moments to get a report. As you can see, he's on his feet. I'm sure we'll see Dexter Manley very shortly. The fine pass rushing defensive end for the Redskins. He left the field, as you saw, just before we went away. Simply under his own locomotion and he appears to be all right. Green Bay has a first down and 10. Kaufman 
gets the first down near the 30-yard line of the Redskins. Ivory. And down goes Ivory. Good defensive play. It was moving up quickly. Okay. Curtis Jordan. Once again, Okowitz is out there. You can't run the football unless you block the Mike man. That's what we call the middle linebacker, the Mike man. And he was out there clean, and he was the guy that kept him from turning up and gave, gave the safety time to come up and make the tackle. I always wonder, you know, they call in, in Dallas, they call the middle linebacker Meg, and in the weak side linebacker Wanda and well, Sarah. It's Dallas. You know, but, Dallas. Yeah, it's, why the way you call those guys Sarah, Meg, well, and Wanda? Uh, <laughs> I tell you, they got to change that in the 80s. <laughs> yeah. They're going to have a lot of problems. This second down and 12. Come on, Wanda. Dickey rolling out, runs into trouble. And he had to unload it for a screen pass for Kaufman. Screen. He didn't have a screen man out there to receive it uh, other than Kaufman. Maybe he was the intended receiver. Tremendous pressure on Dickey as the Redskins brought everyone. It was unfortunate that they couldn't get the ball to Kaufman because it was the perfect defense to run it against. Uh, the Redskins was blitzing everybody, and if Kaufman caught the ball, he would have had three blockers and one guy between him and the goal line. It's one of the things you have to do on a screen. You say, you know, sure, you're going to fake block, but hit him a little bit. Just slow him down. <laughs> they didn't slow him down up there. Third down and 13. And the Skins will be coming. Dickey right into the arms of the Redskin defender. That's Tony Washington back there in the nickel defense. The intended receiver was Paul Kaufman. Dickey again under pressure as the Redskins front four blowing over the offensive line of the pack. Nate Dickey released it before he wanted to. Well, let me tell you, James Lofton, I think, is one of the great receivers in this game, but it appeared from this point of view that he could have got his hands on that ball. Let's take a look. He's trying to hit Lofty coming across the middle. No, it was out in no, front No, it may have been out in front a little too much. Well, he got a little, it was not that kind of pressure that really gets in your way. It's that kind of pressure you feel coming from that backside. <laughs> Scared so him Tony little. Washington gets another Redskin turnover. They've had a lot of them this year. They get the football back at their own 29-yard line. Eight minutes and 16 seconds remaining in the first half from Green Bay, Wisconsin. The ball at the 29-yard line. Tony Washington turns it over, getting the interception from Liam Dickey. First time today, Green Bay lost their serve. That's right. <laughs> Heisman on first down. They like to throw it on first down. You just saw the graphic. He almost got it receiver, back. Art Monk. They almost got their serve right back, it looked like to me. That ball was not very well thrown that time. That'll bring up second down and 10. Bart Starr now in his ninth year. Made the playoffs last year. But prior to that, had only one winning season. That was in 78. He struggled up here. He carries a lot. You know it hurts. Second and 10. This is Joe Washington. And Washington oh. tripped up. Good play. Guess who? Mike Douglas. Douglas. I'm telling you, he's moved over to the left side now, hasn't he? <laughs> he's everywhere. <laughs> Look out, Mad Dog. You got him going. You know, you say that Bart Starr made the playoffs once. I'm going to ask you a question about quarterbacks coaching. I can't understand why they haven't been better coaches. Oh, I know? see. Well, look at Mad Dog. Then nobody can block yeah. him. Boy, he's quick. He really is. He went back with that little, what he thought was going to be a pass. Came back in and covered it off. Lost the three. It'll be third down, 13. Green Bay, not a famed pass rush. They'll try and put pressure on Theisman, however. Theisman, good mobility. He'll pick up the first down. And good move by to get out of bounds. Theisman spotted the first down marker, got out of the 40-yard line, and gets out of a third and 13 situation. And he did have pressure. It forced him out of the pocket. Let's take a look at it. I think it was Arizona Johnson that was all over him. Well, our company, let's take a look. One of them was coming back there. in there. That's Ezra's number 90 that's got right him first. There. Ezra was there, and he's chasing him. And as we said, Theismann is an excellent runner. He ran 15 punts back for this Washington team when he first came back from Canada. Well, I forgot about that. He did, didn't he? He was a yeah. punt returner. So we had Sonny and Billy there. First down, Washington. Their own 42-yard line. 7.23 remaining in the half. Washington, the reverse is to Art Monk, and picked up red beautifully. Byron Braggs pursued it and takes Monk down for a loss inside 
the Redskins 30 yard line. Not only does Green Bay appear fired up, they appear they appear totally prepared for this team. They don't seem to be fooled by anything. They're ready for them, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, Bart said that to you in the interview. Bart wouldn't lie to me, would he? <laughs> Bart wouldn't lie. Byron Braggs, defensive left in, came out to allow the pass rushing specialist come in, Ron Spears. Second down, 19. Heisman back. Prevent defense by Green Bay. And he throws underneath to Joe Washington. And Washington stays on his feet, getting away from one Green Bay tackler, Mark Lee, and gets back to the 43-yard line, a gain of 10. And Joe Washington is something. You touched on it, Don, how nifty he is, but... He had both knees operated on during the offseason. He had one when he came up years ago as a top draft pick of the San Diego Chargers. But he is back, and he is an effective weapon out of that backfield. Call it third down and eight as the ball is placed just over the 43-yard line. Tie game at 17. He's got him. Ties oh. man. That and ball was not thrown very well that time. Tell you, the rookie number one draft pick from Pittsburgh, Tim Lewis, stepped right in front of the intended receiver, Charlie Brown, and Fizer really could not get it into Charlie Brown, and the Redskins will have to provide the evening's first punt. That could be a psychological victory for them by themselves. I would think so. So we watch Jeff Hayes. He leads the NFL in what they call a pooch kick, <laughs> kicking it high and getting it down inside the 20, but he'll be able to kick away on this one is Phil Epps, a great little return man. He had one 90 yards for a touchdown against Tampa Bay earlier. He's back for Green Bay. Hayes doesn't turn it over, doesn't get it high enough, and here comes Epps. There's some speed for you. Look out. He could have uh -huh. got around that corner. The little man runs about a 9-200. It was Ken Coffey that knocked him out, and you're right, had Coffey not been there, so it'll be first down, Green Bay. A reminder, ABC's NCAA College Football, live 12 o'clock Eastern Time, Michigan against Iowa. And then coming up, USA versus Bulgarian amateur boxing. That'll be 4 o'clock Eastern Time. Top Bulgarian boxers against the top U.S. boxers, including Tyrell Biggs. And then ABC's wide world of sports at the WBA World Featherweight Championship. Isabo Pedroza versus Jose Caba. That'll be live from Italy. Wide World of Sports preceded by USA versus Bulgaria, and of course, before that, Michigan against Iowa this Saturday on ABC. Dickey fires one incomplete, gets the ball out to John Jefferson. He's right there close to first down yardage, maybe a little short. At this rate, Dickey may erase every passing record in the history of the NFL. <laughs> I mean, he is dead on the money tonight. They're going to measure Jefferson very close. Dickey now 9 of 14, 144 yards at that one interception. But he was dead on the money with that one, too. He had about a 60-yarder he didn't get when, uh, when Lawson dropped the pass. He's been right on the money. As you can see, Jefferson is running just a, actually a little stop pattern there, a little hook pattern. Comes back to the ball real well and done what he did. he's done so well for the last five and a half years. He just watches it, watches it right into his hands. He does. The ball in the 37-yard line of Green Bay, first and 10. The old flea flicker, Dickey, won't have time to throw it. He wanted to go deep as Dexter Manley hammers Dickey out of bounds at the 42-yard line, but there will be a gain of four. And that play was designed it sure was. to go back to Dickey, who was going to go deep to the tight end, Kaufman. And he had Lofton down there, too, but that, you're right. He said he saw Dexter there close. He said, I'm getting out of here as quick as I can, and he didn't get there quick enough. I wouldn't be surprised if we see Washington run that play later to try to hit Theismann and let Theismann run with the ball. Let's Actually, take a Kaufman. look at it again. Now, there's Ivory. This has got to be a lateral, and yep. it is. Not a good one. Dickey. Smells the hot breath of Dexter Manley on his back. Says, hey, I want the sidelines. <laughs> well, you can bet they didn't want him to run with it. Eddie Lee Ivory on second down and six. And Eddie Lee Ivory 
looking for first down yardage out through the 47 yard line. Darrell Grant defensively there. Well, quick traps. Yeah, a little 40, what we call a 41 trap over the middle. Four yard touchdown. And Wendell Tyler is back, and so are the 49ers. The 49ers and the Rams tied a 5 2 in the NFC. Good football club. Yeah, I want to congratulate, uh, congratulate Ray Worsing. Ray's always been one of the more consistent field goal kickers in the league. He hasn't had a real long leg, even though he had a 52 yarder yesterday. Funny thing is, I watched that game, and you were sort of hoping they wouldn't score on that last drive. You were hoping Ray would get a shot at that seventh field goal. Right now, the Redskins back to live action. First down and 10, 43-yard line of Green Bay. Theisman trying to get points on the scoreboard. Nifty move by Theisman, but he'll have to settle at the 47-yard line for a loss of five as John Anderson was there defensively for Green Bay. That was kind of a strange call almost in a way. It was, uh, appeared to be a rollout designed to get somebody coming across, but those kind of plays take an awful lot of time. Theisman, I know, would like to get three points. He has one timeout remaining, and he's saving that. And he will try something, I do believe, down the middle. Green Bay protecting the outside. And try and get it in field goal range for Mark Mosley. Uh-oh. Under throw, Joe Washington. It'll bring up a third down and close to 15 with 49 seconds on the clock and the Redskins with one timeout. I was looking down the middle, Frank, and he did, he had Giaquinto open down the middle, and he seemed to have his mind made up to go out to that right flat in Washington and just bounced it out there. Second bounces don't count. Well, Joe Theismann has an excellent arm, but he doesn't have the howitzer that the Bradshaws and the people have had in this league, and it's pretty tough to throw that deep out like that if you can't step up in the pocket, so you have to give credit to the Green Bay defense. They are really putting a lot of pressure up in the middle and keeping Theismann from stepping up throwing the ball. They need it somewhere down around the 30-yard line for Mosley. Third and long. Theismann gets it into the tight end, Don Warren. Down close to the 30-yard line, and the seconds continue to tick away. Theismann would like to throw one more pass and kill the clock, and he'll have time to do it. First down and 10 Redskins. Ezra Johnson gave him a good lick that time. Way over his head. And that stops the clock with 26 seconds. And the Redskins will have a second down and 10, one timeout remaining. They're near Green Bay's 30-yard line. Well, we have some tough officials here. They're booing that, saying he threw the ball away. And it wasn't that bad of a, you know, throwaway. It wasn't that obvious. But everybody knew that's what he was doing, throw right? It, yeah. yeah. It's one of those, they throw it away. I'll tell you something. Joe Theismann really is the heart and soul of this football team, in my estimation. He is a spunky little guy. He'll chew the fat with you. I've said that many times. He'll talk your ear off, but he gets things done out there. Steps in that huddle, you know who's running the show. Second and ten. Down Charlie Brown. And Charlie Brown will have another Redskin first down. He's down inside the 12-yard line. That's definitely in field goal range. They're going to try and kill the clock. Joe would like one shot at the end zone. He's got one timeout remaining. Yep, he just threw it away to kill the Stops the clock five seconds, and now I think they'll have to come with the field goal unit. Well, now you wonder why he didn't go ahead and just use his timeout if they were going to. Well, they had a little problem. Charlie Brown seemed to be hurt. He hobbled out to his position on the left end there, and he's hobbling off the field right now. He is limping. Charlie Brown goes off right there. He didn't want, want to stop the clock, so pretty gutsy move. He went back into position, allowed Theismann to stop the clock. And here's Mark Mosley, 28-yard attempt. He's been good at 12 or 15 this season. Let's keep an eye on number 81 on Green Bay. He's been... Well, he didn't even go he didn't jump that yeah. time, right? Mosley splits the uprights. Two seconds remain on the clock. And the Packers and the Redskins are playing a beauty here in Green Bay. 24-20, the Packers over the Redskins. Two seconds points. remaining in the half. It's interesting, we saw a Gary Lewis who's blocked a record amount of field goals, at least in a minimal amount of time here. Recently, we saw him get literally tagged uh, earlier in the game when he was trying to block a field goal, and I was a little surprised that play that he didn't go after. I didn't see him in there either. And you're right, he's blocked uh, 12 kicks, either conversions or field goals, in the last 12 games just by leaping up in the middle of that line and 
using a tremendous vertical leap. And speaking of the tight end Gary Lewis of Green Bay. He was not in on that play. I'll tell you, I don't know if they keep going at this pace in the second half. <laughs> sure, I hope they can. But one thing we know, the Redskins have done it in the past. They've come back against the Raiders, and we know they'll be there for 60 minutes. That was Jeff Hayes drilling it along the ground, and here comes Harlan Huckleby. He expires the final two seconds here in the first half. Didn't hurt his stats, did he? No, that's a stat move. <laughs> Crowd loves it. We hope you love it. Washington 20, Green Bay 24. And we'll be ready for our halftime highlights to this message and then a word from our local stations. The Miami Dolphins unveiled a new quarterback to the New York Jets at Shea Stadium yesterday, and that quarterback could be the future for the Dolphins. Dan Marino, the Pittsburgh Panther record setter for the past four years, made his second start of the season a smash hit on Broadway as he fired the Dolphins back into the AFC's Eastern Division race with first quarter shots like this to Nat Moore. Moore, a pro bowler from a few years back, made it look easy, 66 yards for the touchdown as Miami took an early 7-0 lead. The Jets tied it at 7 in the second quarter. As we pick up the action, Richard Todd was to have a long day. Back looking for a receiver. Big Doug Betters gets a hand on it. It's deflected into the arms of Kim Bocamper. 24 yards, another Miami touchdown. Miami missed the conversion, but they led 13 to 7. And there were seconds remaining in the first half. Dan Marino once again from the shotgun. This time looking for the big tight end, Joe Rose. And number 80 is there. 24-yard touchdown. Miami led at the half 20 to 7. They went on to win 32 to 14. The Silver Dome in Pontiac, Michigan is where the Bears and the Lions got it on yesterday. Picking up the action in the first quarter. No score. Eric Kippel at quarterback for Detroit. Out of the shotgun, looking for number 39, Leonard Thompson. And the speedy wide receivers there at midfield. A 48-yard reception. Down he goes, and watch this. A 15-yard personal foul. That set up Detroit's first score. Second quarter action. Detroit leading 7-0. It's simple again. Looking for Dexter Bussey. Bussey. Collects the ball and moves into the end zone for 14 yards out. Detroit on top, 14 to nothing. But with 12 seconds left in the half, Vince Evans brought the Bears back. Evans back, looking for the former Stanford star, Ken Marjoram, in the end zone. Marjoram, with a diving catch, brings the Bears close. 17-10, Detroit at the half. Then in the third quarter, 17-10, Detroit leading. Gary Danielson in relief of a shaken Eric Kippel, looking for Ulysses Norris. The ball is there, Norris is there, 20-yard touchdown, and Detroit leads 24 to 10. Later in the fourth quarter, 24-17, Detroit leading. Eric Hipple sets up for an apparent field goal. Eddie Murray kicks through. But Hipple has the ball. He looks for a receiver. He's not there, so he moves in on his own from eight yards out. The final score, Detroit 31, Chicago 17, and the Lions with Billy Sims back in the lineup could be tough to handle in the second half of the NFL season. Six times the Dallas Cowboys have come from behind this season to win. And yesterday with the Eagles in town, they came from behind once again. But the story was much different as Danny White enjoyed great protection and a great afternoon. Picking up the action in the first quarter. Dallas on top three to nothing. But Ron Jaworski is back. And he's looking for his gifted wide receiver. Number 82, Mike Quick. Quick out sprints to Dallas secondary. 83 yards touchdown. And the Eagles are on top seven to three. But in the second quarter, Dallas took control. Danny White from the shotgun. Look at that protection. Looking for the tight end, Doug Cosby, number 84. Cosby, 14-yard touchdown, and Cosby gets better with each outing. Dallas on top, 17 to 7. Then in the third quarter, Dallas leading 23 to 7. Danny White pitches out to number 33, Tony Dorsett. Tony Dorsett goes 32 yards. And no one does it like Dorsett. He didn't get his 100 on the day. He got 92, but Dallas won nevertheless. That set up another Dallas score, and again, it was Tony Dorsett. Tony Dorsett, the smallish one with the enormous strength, takes it in. Dallas leads 30-7. to They went on to overwhelm Philadelphia 37-7 to to remain the NFL's only undefeated team. They're 7-0, and we'll see them Sunday night, October 23rd, against the Los Angeles Raiders from Texas Stadium in Dallas. Three Rivers Stadium in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. The Pittsburgh Steelers and the Cleveland Browns, and it would be a long afternoon for the Brownies. No score, first quarter. Browns in possession. Brian Sight is back. 
looking for Bobby Jones. Deflected by Dwayne Woodruff, the cornerback is into the arms of Mike Merriweather, who returns the ball 24 yards to the Browns' eight-yard line, setting up the game's first score. Still in the first quarter, 10 to nothing Steelers. Brian Seif is back, looking for Dave Logan. This time, the ball is picked off by number 57, Mike Merriweather, who takes this one in 31 yards for the touchdown. And the Steelers were on top 17 to nothing. Before the day was over, the Steelers' new addition of the Iron Curtain would pick off Seif six times. Second quarter action, 20 to three, the Steelers. Brian Seif back again, gives the ball to number 30, Boy Screen. Boy Screen filling in for an injured Mike Pruitt. Goes 23 yards for the Brownie touchdown. The second year man from Carson Newman trying to fill the big shoes of Mike Pruitt. That brought the Brownies close at 20 to 10. But still in the second quarter, Cliff Stout, who had a good day, back looking for number 85, Calvin Sweeney. And the veteran from USC takes it 40 yards for the touchdown to put the Steelers out in front 34 to 10. Now it's 37-17 in the fourth quarter. Brian Seif tries to get the ball to Green. Robin Cole knocks it out of his hands. It's picked up by Greg Best. Best scampers 94 yards for the touchdown. This capped another big day for the Steelers' defense. They have scored five touchdowns in the last two games. The final score, Pittsburgh 44, Cleveland 17. Pittsburgh now leaves the Central Division of the AFC by one over the Browns. Tampa Stadium, Tampa, Florida, and John McKay's Bucks wonder after last week's loss to Dallas, how do we win in this league? First quarter action, three to nothing St. Louis. Jack Thompson back for the Bucks. Play action. He looks for James Wilder. An 11 yard touchdown is 6 3 Tampa Bay as the conversion was missed. Then in the second quarter, it's tied at six. 25 seconds left in the half. Lomax is back. He looks for number 80, Doug Marsh. Touchdown is 13 6 St. Louis at halftime. Then in the third quarter, first possession of the second half. It's Lomax once again, back, looking for number 81, Roy Green. The gifted receiver is there. Six-yard touchdown, 20 to six, St. Louis has the lead. They've been saying all along the cards are better than their record, and indeed they were yesterday. Neil Lomax back again, still in the third quarter. Play action, looking for Doug Marsh, 16-yard touchdown. The cards go on to defeat Tampa Bay, 34 to 27. And we'll watch them next Monday night from St. Louis as they take on the New York Giants at nine o'clock Eastern time. What a game we've had, and it began with Green Bay getting on the scoreboard when their offensive team hadn't even got on the field. This is Theismann in the early going, trying to get the screen pass out. He gets the screen pass out all right, but Mike Douglas is there, strips the receiver, sprints into the end zone, and Green Bay was out on top. And then it was John Riggins a short while later following a Washington drive, uncharacteristic of John Riggins, piling into the middle. He fumbles the football. There's a wild scramble for it. By the time they uncovered every football player that was sitting on top of it was Clint Didier, the short yardage tied in, and that tied it at seven. Then Jan, there you see it right there. Didier getting in to come up with the football. Stenerud added a field goal to put Green Bay on top 10 to seven. Mosley answered, and then Lynn Dickey came back for a 36-yard touchdown to Paul Kaufman, who is absolutely terrorizing the secondary of the Washington Redskins. Then John Riggins capped another long Washington drive to make it 17-17. But then it was a combination once again, only this time. Lynn Dickey looks one way, turns around, and he spots Paul Kaufman once again. And Paul Kaufman is giving Curtis Jordan, who is trying to handle him, single coverage fits tonight. And I'm sure that there has been much said in the locker room by Richie Pettibone. How are we going to cover those outside receivers, Jefferson and Lofton, and still cover Kaufman? Set to go, Harlan Huckleby. Jeff Hayes hits it for Washington. And this one will get into the end zone. It'll be a touchback. They'll bring it out to the 20-yard line. And Green Bay will have the first possession here in the second half. We anticipate, of course, Lynn Dickey back out with Eddie Lee Ivory. And Lofton at one flank, Jefferson at the other, and Kaufman at the tight end. Let's take a look at these stats as they change from the first quarter to the halftime. Big ones at five yards, minus five yards rushing in Green Bay. They just couldn't do much of anything on the ground first quarter. Well, the way they were throwing it, I don't think it really means that yeah, much. Look how much they picked it up. See, at halftime, now they've got 18. <laughs> 18 yards rushing, 211 passing, but Green Bay's on top, 24-20. First play from scrimmage here in the second half. And Dickey, let's don't fool around, let's throw it. And he fires 
Robinson. It goes out to James Lofton. Lofton and down the sideline. Oh, wow. And he just about broke it off. But he gets the first down at the Redskins 40-yard line. And what an athlete. Was that Mel Kaufman? Mel Kaufman again. We, he, they ran a reverse earlier. I thought Mel Kaufman saved the touchdown by not being sucked in with the double reverse. And on this play, he's a lot faster than I thought because he made a did an excellent job of catching Lofton. Well, that was Vernon Dean that he beat the first time. And you see James is going down. He couldn't quite, didn't have enough room to work. And here comes Kaufman. Kaufman timed out the angle perfectly on the much faster Lofton. But his first down, Green Bay, near the 40-yard line of the Redskins. Didier in motion. He's got him. He has got Wide him. open. Oh, no. <laughs> and Kaufman. Oh, no. Lofton, corner of the end zone. And if you're with us for the first offensive play of the game, James Lofton had been wide open and missed a sure touchdown pass. Well, he's wide open here, but he's trying to slow down because the ball is a little, I can't say underthrown. He should have caught the ball. Oh, we goodness. all agree with that. But he was trying to make an adjustment. He wished the ball would have been out a little further. The ball wasn't out for enough. He was trying to slow down and yeah. catch the ball at the same time. It was just unfortunate. But I, as I said in the first half, I got a feeling he's going to have a chance to make amends. I think what's happening, you saw single coverage by Vernon Dean. Ordinarily, they're doubling out on Lofton. I think they're trying to double up now on Kaufman, and that'll <laughs> leave Jefferson and Lofton with single coverage. If that's the case, we'll see that again then. Second down and 10. Screen, trying to get it set up. Here comes Jerry Ellis. And Kaufman again. Kaufman saved a big game again this time. He had two. Jerry had he had uh, he had two guys out in front of him. He saved a big gainer, but it's a six-yard pickup by Ellis. He knocked him out on one sideline. Now he's coming back on the other side. The other side line. Gary Ellis, who is a good receiver, Don touched on it earlier. 65 receptions he had in 81. So throw in Gary Ellis with the core of Kaufman, Jefferson, and Lofton. You've got some receivers on that field. Third down and five. They've marked it just outside the 35-yard line of Washington. Ricky back again. Lofton. Easy first down. And Tony Washington laying well off Lofton. And this time, Washington was in single coverage. Well, that's well they're trying Anthony Washington. As I said, we were wondering what Richie Pettibon would do in the second half. They have to make some adjustments. I thought they'd blitz more. They blitz once now. He's given Lofton a big cushion, and there's no way you can stop a guy like James Lofton by giving him that much cushion and covering him one-on-one, -on -one, really. Well, let's look at the defense again. I, it looks like right now they're going into it. 24 yard line. First and 10, and here comes Gary Ellis. Oh, yeah. That was beautiful. That was beautiful. He cut up right at the right time. He exploded right up the middle of the field, and they got it all going right now. And while Green Bay, not noted as a running team, if you throw the ball as well as they have been throwing it, the defensive line of Washington has to think pass rush, and it makes it much easier to run. More than that, the defensive linebackers have to think about getting back into those passing lanes, and I think that's the main reason that play was able to work so successfully. Green Bay comes out smoking here in the second half. Stenner root for the conversion. That didn't make them all bad. The first rushing touchdown against the Redskins in five games. And Bart Starr has the pack up tonight. Let's look at it again. Let's take a look at it. Early in the game, we saw Okowitz really filling those lanes. You seem sort of falling back there. He's five yards off the ball before he's blocked. It's a beautiful cut by Gary, and he just turns on the afterburners. That's a classic look at cutting against the grain and watching the defensive players overrun it. The man, he impacted on so many players' lives, certainly here in Green Bay. Whenever you talk of, to the old pack, and so many of them now in the Hall of Fame, they always have their own personal stories about one of the great people ever in sports, Vince Lombardi. Eddie Garcia to kick off. Mike Downs is deep for Washington. Downs from the 13-yard line. Ooh. And Downs, close line, out over the 25, near the 28-yard line. 
Yeah, they're playing some rock'em sock'em football now. These guys are fired up. There you go, Gary. Gary Ellis. Nifty running. Has put the pack on the scoreboard first here in the second half, and there'll be more. You see him talking to John Jefferson and talking to Bart. He's so, he really does respect. Ivory loses a couple. Green Bay from the 35. Boom. Dickey. And he got out with his helmet intact as he was buried. Dexter Manley was there. Tony McGee. Mr. Sack for the Washington Redskins was also the man who forced Dickey into the sack. Good isolation on Manley there. You see him 72. He almost jumped off sides. Comes give a pretty nice what they call a slap and jerk. Just fighting him off. That was all strength. He Actually, almost stripped the jersey of Swanke. <laughs> he did, didn't he? The worst thing that just happened on that drive is that it is getting late in the game. The Green Bay defense is maybe getting a little tired, and they would have wished the Green Bay offense would have got at least four. That is blocked. Lucky oh, Scribner's first punt is blocked, and the Redskins have it. Oh, Lucky Scribner's punt was blocked by number 48, Ken Coffey, coming from the outside. It was slow getting it away. And it could be that Bucky Scribner on his first punt was a little chilly, just a little slow. And Coffee got it. Boy, he was there. I mean, it was not even it was not even close. He had it all the way. Let's see if we can pick it up. Comes in, he timed that snap just right. Left footed kicker. Wow. The rush is from the right. Yeah, what he did, he went out and double team on the outside man. They thought they were going to block and try to have a return, and he rushed instead. Real nice play on that. On part. first and ten, Joe Washington breaks back, runs right into the arms of Rich Wingo, but he gets a couple. Uh, that was really kind of one of the. Well, we had an interception. Led Dickey through the interception. We had a fumble that turned out to be a touchdown. And there's Dexter. Dexter, you're just as pretty as you can be. <laughs> Isn't he? <laughs> if he asks you, I know what you're well, telling. I'll tell you, he's as pretty as he can be. <laughs> They've got a second down and eight now for the Redskins. They had to settle for three before. They get their turnover. They get so many of them. And they're knocking once again. They're down 31 23. Washington. Joe Washington looking for first down yardage. He doesn't get it at the 10 yard line, but he has a pickup of six. You see him, see him run out That's there. That's how he scoots. Well, but he does, but he looks like that, you know, he ought to be playing. Oh, we saw all these high school teams today driving around here in yeah. Green Bay playing. Joe looks like he'd be one of those guys. He doesn't look like he's not nearly as big as those guys out there. Well, you got to give him credit. I've, I've had one leg that it operated on, and I know how tough it was to work on. Where that. would you find that guy? On two of them. <laughs> Look at that. I hope I don't see him late tonight. <laughs> you saw him late last night. I did. He was eating fettuccine with okay. clam sauce. <laughs> Third down one. Blue Riggins, who better on third and one as Riggins gets the first down near the six yard line. John Riggins going over the left side, and they run so often to the left, and why not? Joe Jacoby at 300 pounds, Russ Graham, 275. They both work on the left side, and Riggins loves to run behind his hogs. Yeah, figure that one out. The last 20 times they've been inside the opponent's 20, they've scored. Is that what that says? Yeah, I read that. Too. Oh, let me First down, goal to go. Washington sprinting for the corner. And he didn't make and it. And he does not beat John Anderson. And he first he might have got a half a yard out of it. It sure looked like he was going to score when he first went out there. Washington, come on, Jay. Big Anderson. It's only about 35 right now. <laughs> what? 35 degrees. Yeah, huh? He's got a little anti, anti freeze in him. Who are you guys talking about? Did I miss something? What was that? <laughs> well, yes, you did. Okay. We'll get to it later. Okay. Second down goal to go. Warren in motion and Beisman's back. Beisman. It's either not a Joe Washington right at the goal line, but the officials are not indicating touchdown. Well, it certainly appeared he was in the end zone when he caught the ball. It's pretty much the same play he caught to beat the Raiders. And I guess it is a touchdown. Touchdown, yeah. Yeah, they did give it to him. That's a play you just bring the back around there. Generally, he's got an option to turn in and out or out on the backer of the safety who's going to guard him, and he turned inside that time, and Theismann 
put it right on the numbers. And the Redskins get seven points out of the turnover. The block count. Mark Mosley through the uprights. Getting closer. And we draw closer. 31. Packers, the Redskins, 30. Let's watch again. And Washington will be right on that goal line. We got a late call on it. I think he was in the end zone when he took it. Wingo is there defensively for the pack. Yep, he's in. Yeah, he's in there. Wingo and Anderson's kind of teamed up on him, but he was there. 5.25 remaining in the third quarter, and the action continues here in Green Bay. A long field goal attempt falls short and is fielded at the goal line by Zach Dixon of the Colts, who then tries to decide whether he can return the ball or not. Now, you make the call. Can Dixon return the ball? Or did you make? Although it almost never happens, it is legal to return any missed field goal, including this one. Wednesday assassinations, the name of the game. He's made a strike. Hotel. Harlan Huckleby, deep for Green Bay. Jeff Hayes to kick off. Joe Theismann. Teams up at Joe Washington. To draw the Redskins to within one. 525 remaining in the third quarter. This time Hayes gets it into the end zone. We'll get the touch back, and Green Bay will begin from their 20-yard line. Let's watch this. Watch at the top of your screen. And keep in mind the Scribner's a left-footed kicker. That's Ken Coffey. Got a straight sprint. Scribner's slow, three steps. And he never even came close to getting it off. Yeah, well, he was particularly slow that time. I think that was purely his fault. The his first attempt of the night. That could have something to do with it. Yeah, it really could. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lonely well, lived it's touchdown. And this was a culmination of a 19-yard drive. Theismann drills it into Washington. Yes, he's in the end zone. Good angle. First down 10, live action, Green Bay. Dickey, let's don't fool around, let's throw it. And the flag goes down. And yeah, we're going to get a holding call, I think, against Green Bay. Well, that's what really upsets you. You know, when you get a holding call after they've already trapped you, you go back to the huddle and say, look, I don't mind you holding them, but hold them good. <laughs> that was big Dave Butts pressuring Dickey. Charlie Brown has been limping pretty much since the first quarter. Appears to be that old ankle they're trying to tape up there. You can do it. Go downtown, Charlie. Larry well, McCarron was holding for Green Bay. Washington declines the penalty. They have Dickey down at the 14-yard line, a loss of six. So it'll be second down and 16. Washington wants the football back. They don't want to give Dickey any more time to throw it. And they may want Buck with a punt again. Dickey and his butts once again. Oh, man. Well, I tell you, that's two plays in a row they got to him was great, great on their defensive lineman because the receivers are both wide open. All they had three receivers out, and all three of them were wide open. Reminder once again, 12 o'clock Eastern Time, NCAA college football ends a beauty from the Big Ten. Michigan goes against Iowa. Michigan 4-0 in conference play, tied with Illinois. Big game in the race for the Big Ten Championship. You'll see it here on ABC at 12 o'clock Eastern Time, Saturday. The loss now back to the seven-yard line. Third down, 23. Phil Epps, James Lofton, John Jefferson, wide receivers, and you better believe that front four will turn it loose. And we come with the drop play up the middle. Gary Ellis. Ellis gets breathing room for Bucky Scribner, the punter, out to the 23-yard line. Well, what I was trying to say at the last time they were about to punt, the big problem here is that the offense of the Green Bay Packers haven't given their defense time to rest. The Redskins are a powerful team. They've been wearing them down, and it's been three plays and out the last two times the Green Bay's had the ball. Here's a man that can hurt you, Mike Nelms, Pro Bowler, three last, well, he came in 81. He's been the Pro Bowl return man the last three seasons, averaging a little over 10-8 thus far this season. And Bucky Scribner will hurry this a little bit. Good kick. It takes Nelms back to the 35-yard line. That Nelms goes for it, doesn't he? Uh, yeah. Nelms hurtling out over the 45-yard line, and Joe Theismann will have good field position for his Redskins offense. 32-yard punt by Scribner. Seven-yard return by Nelms. 347 remaining in the third quarter. The pack is ahead by one. Running back time. Give me the ball. <laughs> then a week from tonight, we're in St. Louis for the Giants and the Cards. First down, 10 Redskins. Good field position. Their own 46-yard line. 
Joe Washington. And look at Joe. Good blocking in Washington. Gets eight down close to the 45-yard line of Green Bay. And Washington totally blew the Green Bay left side of their defense off the ball that time. As I said, these guys are, they average close to 280 pounds up front, and they just wear you down. And it's beginning to tell on Green Bay. And adjustments defensively, although not effective in the early moments of the second half, have seemingly slowed the Green Bay offense. Second and two, play action by Thies, and hides the ball well. Fires, and it's incomplete. <laughs> Gets it in. To the tight end, Don Warren, and there's yardage for the first down at the 35-yard line of Green Bay. We call that a classic case of catching the ball before you run. That's right. Maybe you catch it and you don't run. That's right. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, the ball was a little low, a little inside, but Don made a good move. He just slid in there. Heisman hides that ball well, doesn't he? He does. He's good. But you know, it really is. They've got a good offense to run play action type passes, and he does execute those very well. This is kind of a new look. Two big wide receivers split right. So I think I'll just run that. Way. Washington. Washington. Ooh. Good move to the outside. <laughs> and <laughs> Wisely stepping out of bounds with the first down at the 16-yard line. <laughs> he said, I've gone about as far as I can go. Johnny Gray was coming in there closing on it. Look at him. A little counter move there. Or Franco Harris runs that quite a bit. Dips inside. He's got great blocking up front so he can pick his way around. Don't like it in there. Let me get out there. And oh, well, I'll see you a little later. There's a good block by Art Mock that time. Number 81 that came in there and closed him off so he could dip outside. Joe Washington has the Redskins at the 16 yard line. 22 remaining in the third quarter. Redskins trailing by one. Washington again. They found a working area on the right side as Washington adds more yardage. He'll pick up five. It'll be second and five. Well, they've definitely found something they like over there. They're running the same play over there time after time, and each time they're just blowing the Packer left side of their defense right off the ball. Charlie Brown's limping again. You saw him out there right next to Joe Jacoby. I'm surprised they didn't attack that left side, though, defensively of Green Bay much earlier. They worked mostly to the left side with Riggins. They like to. But, but again, on that left side of the Green Bay line, Mike Butler is not there. Byron Braggs trying to fill in. At nose tackle, the man who always, who always count on for pursuit, they're down to their third one, Charlie Johnson. He's in there tonight. Rich Turner's gone after last week. Terry Jones is out of there. So that's where the pack is weak against the run on their left side. Washington. Well, we had mentioned earlier that if they ran to their left side is what Washington prefer to do. They're running into the strength of the Green Bay defense, and we saw a little of that on this play right here. Washington got inside the 10, short of the first down. It'll be third down and about three. Like Russ Grimm's limping again. We saw him limp a little earlier in the ball game. Grimm, the offensive left guard for the Redskins. Third and three, and one would suspect the Thiesman will be in the passing situation. He brings in Gia Quinto to join Joe Washington. Both good receivers out of the backfield. Track and Mike Douglas read it all the way. Oh, and did he hit Joe Washington? And the Redskins look like they're going to have to settle for three once again. Well, it was a, let's take a look at this. It's, a, it's apparent that Douglas's key is on Washington, the bat. And the minute he stepped across, he just blew in there. And you can't play linebacker any better than that. He didn't miss the key, did he? He did not. <laughs> Mark Mosley. Theismann. He doesn't always put it down. This will be a 28-yard attempt by Mosley. And Mosley is good once again. And now the Redskins have taken the lead. They lead the Packers 33-31. Ten seconds remain in the third quarter. The 5-1 and one Redskins trying to stay within one of the Dallas Cowboys in their division while the Green Bay Packers are 3-3. Three and three. They need a victory tonight to stay within shot of the Minnesota Vikings. Hayes hits it. Got to look at Huckleby, and he settles in at the five-yard line. Look out. Harlan Huckleby. Huckleby.
will be inside the 40-yard line of the Redskins. Brian Carpenter made the save for the Redskins. That's Huckleby's longest return of his career, 56 yards. Well, Green Bay needed something. They needed somebody to get him going, and Harlan Huckabee, who came from Michigan, he was a super back for them. I thought we would have heard more about him since he's been a pro, but tonight he's really doing a good job on these returns, and he did a super job of picking his way through there. I thought at one point he's going to run away with it right here. Good running by Harlan Huckleby, and... Green Bay comes roaring right back. They trail at the end of three quarters, 33-31. We'll return for fourth quarter action after this word from our local stations. Here in the second half, the Redskins have really put the pressure on Lynn Dickey. In the first half, not much pressure, and he hung up some big numbers. Most of that yardage you see right there. And now he has good field position at the Redskins 40-yard line. First down and 10 Green Bay as we start the fourth quarter. And again on first down. He's got him. Wide open. Down the sidelines, Gary Ellis. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and he's out of bounds at the seven-yard line. It'll be first down, goal to go. Mark Murphy made the saving tackle. It's amazing how easy you can make it look when you have the time to throw. That was a well-executed play all the way around. A little play action. You'll see him come out of the backfield. Ellis, a little quick fake to Eddie Lee up in the middle. He's got him one-to-one -one on the outside. They cleared it out. Trying to cover with the linebacker, Mel Kaufman, it'll never work against a speedy back like Ellis. But what do you do? You have to double cover Lofton. You have to show double coverage on Jefferson occasionally. First down, goal to go. Roll for Dickey. Eddie Lee Ivory tried to get it in. Good defensive effort. Over on the left side, it was Mel Kaufman. It'll be second down, goal to go. Well, if they've done anything defensively, they have seem to be able to take Paul Kaufman away from Green Bay. In the last two drives, Green Bay's receivers were open. Unfortunately, Dickey didn't have the time to throw the ball. Dickey, 17 at 23, 260 yards. Second down, goal to go. Remember, the Redskins have the number one defense in the NFL against a rush. So one could expect Dickey maybe play action and firing the ball. A reverse. A walk in by the tight end, Gary Lewis. A beautiful call. Whoa. Absolutely beautiful call. Yeah, wasn't that pretty? We saw Gary Lewis come with that reverse against the Giants, Don. Remember? Yeah. And he was taken trying to get into the end zone. This time it works for Green Bay. And they are back out on top. Well, a lot of folks, I guess we might as well go ahead and tell everybody, but the coaches had a meeting a little while ago, and they decided the first team to 50 wins. <laughs> and it looks like they might yeah. both make it. Yeah, first team 50 wins, so you got to get in and hustle with them. Stenerud is on. Come on, Yon. Zip. That's and 71 points. The <laughs> Packers. Draw out in front again, 38-33. Uh, that drive set up by a fine return of 56 yards on the kickoff by Harlan Huckleby. Let's take a look at Gary Lewis lining up in a double tight end type situation, and it's just a simple reverse. Curtis Jordan again comes up a little short. Bless his heart. He's been close <laughs> to all the guys that scored all night. <laughs> and the day of television, you Whoa, know what it is. Wow. Picked up too often, close to the man who scored. Gary Ellis puts the Packers back out on top. We'll be back. <laughs> they love the Packers here in Green Bay. As we begin the fourth quarter, they are as one on their feet. And they have something to cheer about tonight, last week. A pitiful effort against Detroit. Detroit beating the pack 38-14. They have roared back now and challenging the Redskins. They have the lead, 38-33. Mike Nelms brings it out for Washington. And a good return out to the 30-yard line. And Washington's offensive unit comes onto the field. Well, I bet this is the Packer team my old coach John McKay saw a few weeks ago. <laughs> that sounds like the same one to me. They cut off to a roaring start. Yeah, 49 in points in the first half. <laughs> Take a look at the numbers now. 
We'll take a look at the halftime stats, and then we'll dissolve that over to what transpired in the third quarter. Washington adding more yardage with Green Bay coming back. Washington's time of possession, 28 minutes to 16. First down, 10, Washington, live action. The screen, Art Monk. Good defensive effort. Mike McCoy there for the pack. Well, that played in.